This is the 2024 Mercedes-Benz E350. Is it the ultimate luxury midsize sedan? Hey everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I hope you're having a great day. Today I'm at Mercedes-Benz of Shreveport and we're gonna go over the particulars on this E350. If you want to know more about this particular model or anything else they have here at Mercedes-Benz of Shreveport, check out the link down in the description of the video. Maybe you're that person who's saying, Tom, I'd love to buy an S-Class, but it's just a little bigger than what I need. This is what you need to be looking at. This E350 is practically a mini S-Class in and of itself. Without the price tag, not quite as big, but it has all of the same features. Now that flickering effect you see right there is not really happening. That has to do with my camera. So don't worry about that. You may wonder, how can I make my lights do that? You can look through the lens of a GoPro, that's how. They don't really do that. Full LED lighting here, we can have our LED headlights, the projector beams, LED daytime running lights, everything here, full LED. You also have a large active air curtain right here that's going to allow for air to flow through the front end. And I'll show you where it comes out right here. I don't know how well you can see that. We could probably do it better on the other side, but that's where it comes out. That helps you out with gas mileage. But with such a low profile in the stance of this E350, you're automatically going to be good where that's concerned anyway. We have a combination of some chrome and some gloss black here on the front end. Also a little bit of matte black finish down here in this area. A very nice clean look as you would expect. If you're curious about the exterior color, it's called Alpine Gray. This model is 4MATIC, so that means that it's all wheel drive. And let's take a quick look here at our wheels. All four corners will have 20 inch wheels, but we'll have different tire and wheel setup on the front and the rear. On the front here, 245 will be your width. The sidewall is a 40 series. And as we work our way here to the back, you're gonna have a 275 on the width back here and a 35 series sidewall. So gonna have that. We'll have our deployable door panels right here. When you walk up to the vehicle, if they haven't already deployed, they will. If you have the remote in your possession, that will take care of that for you. Let's take advantage of the bright Louisiana sunshine and show you the remote. You can see what all is here. A pretty simplistic remote, but that's not a bad thing. Not overly complicated. And as far as your side view mirrors go, they literally have everything that I know a lot of you like to have here. Turn signal indicators are built in. They're heated, they're power adjustable, and let me go right here. I'm going to push this button, and you're gonna see that they are also power folding. That is apparently a very popular feature for a lot of people. Another feature that's very popular, the panoramic sunroof. Much larger sunroof than what we would have in a lot of cases. We finish things off here with a familiar look back here with the Mercedes-Benz logo design with your LED taillights. A little bit more chrome here as well, but overall a very clean look. You have the spoiler built into the trunk right here. It gives it a nice look, really just kind of flows right off of the deck lid right here. Very clean, very nice. This E350 is motivated to get down the road by a two liter inline turbocharged four cylinder. It makes 255 horsepower and 295 pounds feet of torque, mated to a nine speed automatic transmission. And how about your MPGs? Well, the best way to tell you about that is to show you what's on the window sticker. We're looking at 24 city, 33 highway, 27 combined and 3.7 gallons of gas for every 100 miles driven. The gas tank is located over here on the passenger side. And when you fill up, you don't have capless fuel fill. You have the good old gas cap. It seems that's more popular with a lot of people than capless fuel fill. When you fill up, you have a 17.4 gallon gas tank. To gain access to your cargo space, you can use the remote. You can use a button on the trunk. There's also a button on the interior, the driver's side. And when you look into this area, you're gonna find 19.1 cubic feet of cargo capacity. To maximize that, you just pull on the release right here. You'll notice that that seat will go down. We have one over here on the left-hand side as well. And that's not the only way you can configure that, but we'll get to that in just a second. The one thing I did want to tell you about is the only thing that's missing back here is the presence of a spare tire. You do have a tire repair kit, but 
it is something you need to know about if this is something you want to buy. And here is that other way to configure the rear seating area that I told you about. You have the release right here, and it allows you to fold down the center section right here, the center seat back, and create a pass-through. There could be a lot of advantages to that depending on your situation, what you're dealing with. And over here on the left-hand side, we'll take a look at the large door bin. I like that, a lot of extra space. And we'll go ahead and close that. Armrest seems to be pretty comfortable. It's nice and large, I like that. And there is a lot of room back here. For a mid-size sedan, personally, I think it's rather roomy back here. You have a lot of space. Depends on where these front seats are set, but you still have this inset area right here to help out with that. That's why you have that. It's not just there for cosmetics. It's also there if the seat happens to be far enough back. Instead of having it come straight down, the seat back comes straight down like this, that actually helps out to increase leg space a little bit with the way it's designed. Very comfortable back seat, by the way. A popular question I receive a lot is, can you recline the back seats? No, you can't in this case. So they are comfortable, that's for sure. And you can see some of the ambient lighting on the door over there. We're going to go, hopefully, into a darker atmosphere later on if I can get in and show you what everything looks like in the dark. So that will be helpful. Here is your latch system for the parents out there with the safe child safety seats. And I like that you don't have to move anything out of the way. You don't have to disconnect anything, take a cover off or anything like that. It just stays in place basically. So it's one less thing to keep up with for you busy parents out there. We have the rear seat pockets on the back of both seats and we'll also find some connectivity down here. Let's see if I can get down there. There we go. Make sure I can show you that. We'll also have our rear air conditioning vents. And earlier I did mention that you have a panoramic sunroof. Essentially, you have a front and rear sunroof. One of the correction Nazis may have already said something in the comment section, but I'll go ahead and correct myself anyway. But it is beyond what you would call a conventional sunroof, and this front section is definitely quite large. What can you expect to pay if you were going to come into Mercedes-Benz of Shreveport and buy this Mercedes-Benz E350, the 2024 model? It's $81,765. And I wanted to show you the power shades that are here for the front and rear sunroofs. And this front portion will open up. So I'm going to close that back up simply for the fact Just a that, moment. oh, we don't need to talk yet. There we go. You do have the MBUX system, and I'm going to give you a demonstration of that later in the video, but it's not quite time yet. So let's see what you get over here on the driver's side door. Let me open this up so we can take advantage of the sun a little bit more. Remember I told you you could open the trunk from the driver's seat area? Well, there is the button, and we'll have all of our typical controls and switches. You saw a little bit of that earlier in the video. And here we go with our seat memory right here, three different settings heated seat for the driver and the passenger. There's your ventilated seats in addition. And something I really like here, it should be a given at this price point, but I even think lower priced vehicles in the 30s and 40s that have seat memory on the driver's side should also have it on the passenger side as we do here. So let's take a look at what else we have. Our steering wheel mounted controls, the good thing about what you have here, everything you're likely to expect, but you can also control what is going on with your different screens. So depending on what you need to see and what you need to do, you can adjust a lot of things. And we're gonna get back to that in just a second, but I did wanna show you a couple of things real quick here. Number one, here's how we control the lighting on the exterior of the vehicle. Here's how we control the windshield wipers. And there's another function here that a lot of you do not seem to be familiar with. Feel free to ask questions if you're not sure exactly what I'm talking about here's your shifter pretty easy to deal with put your foot on the brake you pull down to go into drive push that into the up position to go into reverse and speaking of that here are all of our different camera views got the overhead view obviously you're gonna have a multitude of views your front view camera right there and then additional camera views all around the vehicle so it's nice to have that depending on what you want to see if you want to use the entirety of the screen for that overhead view well guess what you can it's very easy to do and so that's a good thing now let me go over here real fast we also have the screen for the passenger everything is over here as well that we have on the center screen pretty neat to see all of that you'll find out what all is there as we work our way through the video. I'm not going to cover everything on that screen. We'll do it on the center screen right here. Now, we do have our shifter paddles here, so you can work your 
your way back and forth through that nine speed automatic transmission. And let's take advantage of the controls here. I'm going to push home right there and you'll notice some of the features that come up there on the bottom. I can scroll through using this right here, this area right here is kind of like a trackpad of sorts. And we can scroll through and determine what we want to see. If we want navigation, we can do that. If we want assistance, if we need service, We'll go over here and look at our dash display. We can go to sport if we want to. I like that. That just has a nice sporty look and feel to it. Very, very nice. And you can see the ambient lighting in this area. Quite a bit going on where that's concerned. Now, let's go over here to the screen. There's a lot to talk about here. Don't let it fool you because it looks like it may be overly complicated. If this is something you've never had before, that is not the case. Very easy to use, very easy to figure out and hunt and peck your way through. Depending on what you need to see, you can go in right here. And right here is camera. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And notice what we're looking at right there. That's from right here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change views and now you can see me filming you and you can wave back if you want. Kind of an interesting thing. And you can not only do that, you can also take still photos. Let's do that and we'll take some still photos. In fact, you can take three and there we go. I didn't get everything I wanted to out of that, but that's what we have. You can also do that and get another still photo. And you can go in, let's see here, depending on what you want to do, you've got a few things that you can go in and look at here as far as your settings go, all that good stuff. We're gonna go back out of that because I did want to show you one more important thing here that we have where this is concerned. And if you want to see what you have recorded or the pictures you've taken, you're just gonna select right there where I just did, and that will go in and let you see everything. There's my video. And you've seen all of that already, but the one question you might have is how do you gain access to those files right here? You're going to need a memory stick, USB-C, and the larger the better. I guess in this case it depends on what you're going to be doing with it. This model does not have the built-in dash cam, although that is available to have if you want to. It's available on all Mercedes-Benz vehicles these days, but you don't necessarily need a memory stick this big if it's something that you're not going to have if you're just going to take pictures and shoot some video, but it's up to you what you get. I do recommend a larger one. Now, we can go in here and look at our navigation. That's here, built-in navigation, but you can also pair your smartphone wirelessly and use whatever apps you want to on the phone. Let's shut that down real quick. Speaking of that, since Mercedes did chime in right there, let's go ahead and do something I wanted to do to let you know what kind of questions you can ask the Mercedes-Benz with this MBUX system. Hey, Mercedes. Yes? What can I ask you? I can do things for you whenever you want, such as calling someone, writing text messages, or playing music. Because my heart's in it, I know everything there is to know about driving in your vehicle. For example, you can tell me, hey, Mercedes, drive me home, or ask, hey, Mercedes, is there congestion on my route? You can also tell me if you're too warm, too cold, or if you're bored or hungry. My goal is to constantly evolve in order to give you the best possible support. Every now and again, just ask me if I've learned anything new. I'm looking forward to hearing from you and wish you a pleasant journey as always. Okay, there we go. I apologize if that was a little long, but you know what? A lot of people have asked me for that, so there you go. Now, there is a lot more going on here. We're not going to talk about everything, but you can see what all is here, the different information. You can go into comfort right here. Now, one thing to note here is that you do not have any physical controls for your air conditioning. Everything is managed from the screen right here. But as you just heard, the MBUX system will help you out with that. Just ask questions, whatever you need to do with that. That makes life a lot easier, a lot more simplified. So that's always good to know. And we'll go in here and look at comfort real quick, just to show you what all is here. In fact, you even have the massage seats. And that is something I am really happy about because I did go to the gym before I came in here this morning to shoot this video, so I'm a little sore. 
I can take advantage of these seats for a little while. That's very nice. And you can see that you have several different options right here, depending on what you want to do. Now, there is a lot you can do with the ambient lighting as well. Like I said, we're going to try and get into a darker atmosphere later on and show you what's going on there. I'm not going to guarantee that I can do it, but we'll just see what happens. And you can go into manage settings right here and you can see some of those settings. Super simple to deal with. The hunt and peck method will do you very, very well. And you can see some of your one touch buttons down here, depending on what you need. And so that's easy to deal with. And then right here, if you want to, you can conceal everything away right there or and leave that open. There's where your wireless charging pad is. Your cup holders are here and a couple of USB options as well. And just a quick look here, get that to focus for us a little bit. Just take a quick look at what is on the upper console. So that's easy to deal with. Pretty simple. You got your lights up there and you'll also have your Bombay doors here that reveal a little bit of storage in there and another USB option. And there we go. How about that? Now, this is one of the settings you can have. You can have solid lighting throughout the entirety of the vehicle if that's what you want. Like I said earlier, Mercedes-Benz does it unlike anybody else in the industry. So you can see your different lighting selections right here as far as multicolor goes. If you want to change things up, it's pretty easy to do. I'm not going to go through everything, but then if you want to go from multicolor to just one color, well, we have 64 different colors to choose from. I always think that blue shows up the best, but we'll take a look at some of the other colors here. And any of that flickering, again, if you didn't hear me say it earlier in the video, is coming from my camera. It's not really happening. But I really like what we have here. And that does work its way into the back seat, as you can see. There you go. And quite a bit going on here with the interior of this Mercedes-Benz E350. A little bit more up there on the upper console. And how about the exterior? Let's take a look at what we have here. You have the projected logo right there, the Mercedes-Benz logo. There are illuminated door handles on the front and rear doors. Also a little bit of light shining off here onto the side of the body. And as we work our way around to the front right here, I really like what Mercedes-Benz has done here. You have that fully illuminated, at least with the surround on the grill. I think Mercedes-Benz has the corner or the market cornered, let's get that correct, when it comes to the lighting, especially the ambient lighting on the interior. Okay, we're gonna get out on the road for a quick test drive with this Mercedes-Benz E350. And it has a very nice balance of a comfortable ride quality. It handles great, as you would expect. The seats themselves, in my opinion, seem to be very comfortable. And when you need to get up to speed to move around a slower moving vehicle, well, it isn't difficult to do that. I'm not going to go too terribly fast, but we're going to get in front of this 18 wheeler, give him a lot of space before I get back over and we'll move on back over. Now, I barely even got, well, not even to half throttle. So that was no problem. Acceleration is good. The gas pedal and the brake pedal, very manageable. I like that. And you have a very comfortable steering wheel. As you would expect, the steering is responsive. You have a very tight turning radius. So a vehicle that is well, very well balanced. My tongue isn't very well balanced. We get tongue twisted sometimes, but we're going to leave that in there. A very well balanced vehicle with everything you can imagine here. Great handling characteristics, plenty of power to get down the road and all of the great safety features as well. The brake pedal is just as manageable as the gas pedal. I like that. That's a good thing. It doesn't take a long time to get used to. And by the way, as I'm sitting here waiting for this traffic to clear so we can get on out here, one thing I didn't mention earlier in the video is the fact that over here to the right-hand side of the steering wheel, I don't know if you can see it from your vantage point, but it's right here is the button to start and stop the engine. Underneath that button is the button to turn on or off, depending on what your preference is, the auto stop start feature. So depending on what you want to do, that's where that is located. And I love the high tech feel of this interior with all of the screens, but in my personal opinion, it's not an overload. It, it feels neat, it feels modern, but it doesn't feel 
too much, if that makes sense. I guess it just depends on who you are and what you're used to on what you may think about that kind of thing. But a very well-balanced vehicle, easy to see out of, a blast to drive. It's comfortable, it's practical, and it gives you that classic Mercedes-Benz feel of having your Mercedes, owning your Mercedes. Yeah, I realize that a price tag of over $81,000 isn't exactly cheap, but you know what? If you compare that to an S-Class, it definitely is a good bit less expensive. Okay, tell me what you think about the 2024 Mercedes-Benz E350. Is it the ultimate luxury mid-size sedan? Tell me what your thoughts are. Always curious to know. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends at Mercedes-Benz of Shreveport for loaning me this E350 for the day. And a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe. That way you don't miss any future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I'll see you there.